There's a weird sense of something big on the horizon. People are getting impatient, driving erratically, more so than ever. And people are, not, are dying, not just famous people, loved ones and people I know, my grandmother, my friend Charlie. 2016 wants to eat me alive, slowly. The bipolar disorder that I had worked so hard to learn to keep in check was joined by an additional diagnosis, ADHD. <laughs> Medication is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I wasn't focused until suddenly I was. But it's a stimulant. And that might trigger mania, so now I have another long road to figure out how to live with my own brain all over again. 2016 started out great for me. Well, actually, no, wait. I was really, really sick on New Year's Eve, and then 10 years into 2016, David Bowie died. And the rest of the year went to shit, and I lost my job and totaled my car, so yeah, never mind. Fuck this year. <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint the most difficult thing that's ever happened to me. Because whatever difficulty is now, is present, is always the worst. For a hot second, I lost my medical coverage, and it went away because of clerical error. It gets me therapy, it gets me to a doctor, it keeps me on hormones. I need those hormones, not just because of how they reshape my outsides, they match my insides, or that my emotions are tangible. Uh, I've had surgery. You, if you don't know, there's more than one the surgery. And while I didn't have that particular that the surgery, I still had a the surgery. Uh, my life is better for it, and Medi-Cal got me that the surgery. But as a result, I don't make testosterone anymore. Any cisgender woman has more testosterone in her body than I do, and without Medi-Cal, I don't have hormones. If I don't have those, I don't just say goodbye to the soft skin, but I'll get very, very, very sick, and now my ox is my chronic pain in PMDD has hit an all-time high this year. Deep physical pain and cyclical, hormonally-induced depression is paining my days with my daughter and husband in a heavy and inescapable gray. I must find a way out of this. The pain has become a part of my every day, a muscular gremlin that perches upon my shoulders, and every month is a slow crawl to the three days where reality will recede and a temporary depression will engulf me. Tomorrow, I will weep. Weep from joy for my daughter's future. Yes, racism will continue after tomorrow and we will have many rivers to cross in regards to her inevitable discrimination. But tomorrow, I will help elect the first female president of the United States and my daughter will be with me. Tomorrow, 2016 redeems itself. The election will be over, and my Facebook feed will be full of stupid photos of my friend's food again. <laughs> and Hillary will be president. I'm excited. Well, excited and scared. I know how I'm going to vote in every race, and on every measure, and every prop. We're so prepared. I'm very excited about voting. I read up on all the candidates, the propositions. I feel very well informed. Though Hillary is not my first choice, I feel she is the best choice we are given. I want to be a mom so bad, and I know that Heather and I are going to adopt someday. Yeah, I'm excited about someday telling them about that morning in November. I'm excited that the possibility that a child born in 2008 could live to the age of 12 without knowing a world where a white cisgender man was president. I have a terrible cold. I'm so sick I can barely get out of bed. And I still have to figure out which judges I voted for. But I have my white glass all picked out and excitedly told my 15 year old niece that in four years, when she votes for president for the first time, it will be the 100 year anniversary of the 19th Amendment. She thought that was really cool. I will help elect the first female president of the United States, and my daughter will be with me. And I will take a million pictures and I will carry her proudly in my arms in the heat with my navy, albeit improvised pantsuit, deliciously sticking to me. This day shall be documented so she will forever know she began her life in a world where women can do anything, in a world where women's rights are honored, in a country where the majority of its citizens believe in equality and celebrate diversity, stand up for the marginalized, no matter how loud the antithetical side may be. Our candidate 
will be elected, proving that while there is hate, it is stuck in the dirty corners of the country, angry and scared, but without the strength it had in our darkest history. Our candidate will be elected, proving that the majority of our fellow citizens would never send us and her brothers and sisters of color and the LGBT community and Muslims and immigrants to slaughter for their own financial gain or to simply protest a dysfunctional government or for the whim of change. Our country knows the stakes of this election. In the morning, we get up very early in my life and we go down the street to vote arm in arm. No pantsuit for me, as I'm generally scared of the cold clothes I could get from this gender in public. But I'm wearing one of my favorite t-shirts. It's got the chemical structure, estrogen, and the words, I survived testosterone poisoning. <laughs> and I'm sipping from my travel mug of coffee made with beans I ground myself. Everyone is energized, there's hope in the air, we're expecting fuckery, and of course everyone needs to band together and do the work, but there's no way she can lose. I've filled out my sample ballot like my life depends on it. Each measure has been discussed, each judge evaluated, each little circle inked in perfectly. President? I didn't have to think about that. We knew she's going to win. Our first woman president who got in just under that 100 year wire. I reflect on the election eight years ago. I remember I ending with my college roommate on the East Coast while we both watched the news. When it was called for Obama, we celebrated making history together. I'm considering contacting Vicki tomorrow so we can witness history being made together again. I left for Santa Monica around 6 that night, and while the results of the time I leave are really promising, I'm being stressed out. I'm happy to head to Santa Monica and play D&D with my friend Violet. I'm so grateful for the distraction. It's now Tuesday at 6. The results of the election are starting to come in, and it does not look good. I go to drum circle. It helps me focus and get aggression out. At 8 o'clock when it's over, my friend who works at Remo tells me Hillary is slightly ahead. Wait, is that the map? The little bar at the bottom of the screen skews more red than blue now, and by a significant amount. The game's a good distraction, but we're chit-checking our phones, and we can see it. No one wants to say it, though we all still talk around it. I still feel hopeful. On the table, I text Violet. I spent 33 years trapped in the wrong identity. I can do four years of Trump standing on my head. She smiles. She gets it. The little bar at the bottom of our phone screen grows more and more red, and everyone's on it, but will not say what we can see happening. Vanessa came out and said no news tonight, so we're all figuring that as the week wears on and results come in and news of voter suppression is considered, something else will happen, and we have some breathing room, and we change this channel, and we're laughing, and we're talking about strategy, and family guy is on, and I see an email notification that she conceded, and the walls close in, and it's over. Panicked, I say something to the room, and we all check our phones because it can't be true, but news sites are verifying it everywhere, and the TV's muted, and Erica bursts into tears, and Scott plays Bad Mood Rising on his phone, and we're all just sitting there, and even after the song ends, silence, except for the crying. All I can hear is people crying and vomiting. But I can't feel anything because that can't be the map. I'm emotionally numb. I have to go to sleep. I'm going back to work early in the morning, but I stay up late enough to know, and my emotions shut down like a slammed door. My mind is at once in a slow melt and an overdrive. I feel like every moment of abuse and harassment I've endured at the hands of men is coming in focus. I'm sick. I'm sick. took the next day off of work so I could celebrate. <laughs> My best friend comes over for TV and pizza. It is a Wednesday and it has to be normal, normal, normal because I'm not ready for t Transgender Rem Day of Remembrance to roll around the next week and to know that it is suddenly more likely that I will one day have to read her name. Um, I don't try to hide that I'm trans, but I don't advertise it. People tend to treat me one way when they know right away, and they treat me like they would anyone else if they don't find out right away. I have passing privilege, and I try not to acknowledge that I pass because I feel guilty for passing, because I think it's awful that we have to pass 
us if we want to be treated like humans, and so few of us do. But I'm in my late 30s, well past the average life expectancy for someone like me, and that almost makes me an elder as trans women go. <laughs> I'm going to be another statistic soon. Heather's going to get a call late in some night and be asked to come to the morgue and identify her husband's body. She's going to put my portrait in the temple at Black Rock City. My mind whirls as it tries to make sense of the inescapable truth. Had she been a man? Had she been a man? Had she been a man? <coughs> How is this still happening today? My daughter, my beloved innocent, this world, how, how is this still happening today? There is a hallucinogen called white privilege, and this country is overdosing. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter, my friends, my community, we've been sacrificed. God, people hate women. And not like, oh, if you don't like Hillary, then you hate women. That's stupid. But like, millions of Americans saw a reality TV persona brag about sexual assault, call <clears throat> beauty pageant winners fat, threaten female reporters, repeatedly infer that women are only as valuable as they are fuckable, including his daughter. <laughs> the list goes on and on, and it's not just what he says. It's not just locker room talk. He cheats on wives, and he trades them in for younger ones. Women voted for this. Millions of men and millions of women did this. What have we done? My greatest fear for myself and for everyone is the same thing that has been happening already. Active discrimination happening so frequently and fast that it can't be stopped. Trump gave people permission to be prejudiced out loud and they are acting on it. It's already real. And also, that same 15-year-old niece texted me on Wednesday because she believes the 19th Amendment will be overturned by the end of next year. I don't want my four nieces and six nephews to be cynical and afraid I want them to know they are making the world better. But how can they see it when power goes to someone who will make it worse? I'm afraid for, well, everyone. Hate reigns. I'm afraid for my friends, all of them. Most of them fall in at least, at least one of the categories that would make them target for hate. Even the white, straight Christian males who voted against hate. I'm scared for my family, especially my two nephews who are adopted from Guatemala and Ethiopia. I'm scared for what this country will become. I don't understand how they can remain. It is a constant among queer people and artists that we end up having to distance ourselves from blood family. And as those bonds fray, the bonds between the family we develop among our queer and artistic circles deepen and strengthen. The comfort of this is cold sometimes, but mostly the thought of it is like rain on a hot pavement. Petrichor in late September. Family is family, though they're not your blood. The odds are against us. This won't be easy, but we're not gonna do it alone. Eventually I'll be able to get through the day without spending bouts of it, suddenly realizing I've been crying or just standing there staring at the wall, right? This can't last forever, right? I won't lie. I daydream about the Electoral College voting for her instead. Or for it to suddenly be abolished by SCOTUS and the popular vote to win out. But this is not a play, and there is no Dave's ex machina to save us. I've always considered myself more Californian anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Only I can't hurt my back. I know that there will be hope and action and mobilization, and I know that I'll be up for it, and I don't know if we'll succeed, but there's a lot to fight for, and it's worth it. But it's so hard right now to see past today. I hope in the face of fear, hate, and anger, the love will win. Love must win. We are rising. Much more of the veil has lifted. Now we know where we are. Now we know who we were not. The, this end is a beginning. This darkness calls for light. <laughs>